Well, welcome back to Saul Good Podcast. My name's Max. I'm the host of this. Today we have a very, very special, awesome guest, Jake Doolittle, who I just recently met over the internet. Um, I'll let him talk about how he knows me. Uh, Jake is a photographer, video editor, just overall super cool dude. Uh, I'll let you guys get to hear more about him as this goes on. But uh, hey, thanks for coming on the podcast, my dude. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Max, Chicago videographer. (laughs) Yeah, that seems to work. It seems to be the going thing. Like ever since I changed my name to that on Instagram, Uh like there's more people that are like, catching on to that and like messaging me so it's kind of cool a little secret there for you guys that's that's <laughs> that's how i uh that's how i found you yeah, yeah yeah and also through curtis and through commenting on uh dean jacob all their stuff yeah um but yeah dude thanks again thanks again for coming on yeah lucky lucky episode number 20 and i almost forgot that so before this started that's okay so big deal, big yeah. deal here. <laughs> yeah. Lucky episode um, number 20. As everyone knows and loves, 20 is the lucky number. <laughs> yeah. Um, all righty. So first off, I'd like to have you just kind of give your, like a brief synopsis of who you are. So I mentioned you're a photographer, you're an editor, um, but that didn't just start from nowhere. You sure. started from somewhere, and I think that's a good place to start this. Uh, and just kind of, yeah. Talk about what you do, and let's hear about how you got started and everything. Sure. So I, uh, I, I'm a photographer, video editor. I started uh, taking photos uh, maybe six years ago, not not that long ago, and uh, sort of fell in love with it. Started. I wanted to I wanted to take photos at at concerts because I couldn't afford to get a ticket to the concert. And I knew that I actually, I looked up free ways to get in the concerts. And uh, I, f- I learned that you could do that by, uh, by <laughs> taking photos. And so I, uh, I was able to get into some concerts and, and shoot that and then use it in my portfolio and then shoot for bigger and bigger artists. And then uh, from there, uh, I met Curtis and, and Danny and Drew and did uh, photography for their tour. And then I started doing video editing for Curtis and then video editing for a bunch of other people. And now I am here. And now I'm editing for you. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's let's go. freaking go. Absolutely. Um, that's cool. That's cool. So take a couple little steps backwards here from that. So uh, first thing is when you start shooting shows, that's like a big thing. I see it on TikTok all the time. People are like, this is how you format the email to talk to an artist for a show or whatever. Here's how I'd write an email to get a photo pass for a show. So once you have the contact info... Like I see that all the time. And also I've talked to a lot of friends that do that. And I know that's a hard thing because like sometimes there's like publications and stuff that like artists like, nope, you're not a publication. Nope, can't use you. Um, But there's other times where they're not that big of a deal and they're like hey whoa free photographer let's go and they bring you on so what was that like for you did you have to like send a certain email or was that just luck of the draw email or what yeah so at least like for me also to the people who are making tiktoks like that stop stop showing off our tricks stop it you know (laughs) i see tiktoks like that and it's like this is how you find artist emails and i'm like hey 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 don't do that (laughs) I, uh, no, but I, so my, my sort of, the only way that I shot for, for the people at the beginning of my portfolio was without a publication. Um, and it was all for, I I can't even say smaller acts. Like I, the first concert I shot was like this strange festival in Maine where I live that was like a, 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 music slash weed festival it was the strangest it was really weird uh but i used that to put it into my portfolio and then the (laughs) second concert that i shot was modest mouse which was really cool whoa that's a big deal yeah so and i was i was like i was like newly turned 17 like i it was an 18 plus show 
and so I I snuck my way in there. But I had the I had a photo pass and everything. But like, it was uh, and then from Modest Mouse. This is all without a publication, which I feel like now it's much tougher to do. Way harder, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I like, I don't know, like three years ago, before everybody was a concert photographer. <laughs> before everybody bought like before their their t3i yeah before everybody bought a, a an a a6000 a7s yeah. <laughs> i uh it, yeah it was it, it was like okay like i i felt like in maine at least i was like all right i i personally know everyone who's shooting these concerts but now i have no clue like there's so many people now um but after yeah. Modest Mouse, I used that in my portfolio to shoot for Billie Eilish, who was just starting. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So, and then, and then as she grew, my photos grew, and that's sort of how everything sort of snowballed. But I don't, I would not. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's a bold statement, but I, I feel like things would be way different if I never shot for her. Right. No, I agree with that. Yeah. I, I've had a couple experiences myself where I'm like, I wouldn't be here without this yep. one little thing. And I think that's how like all of this works too. Like that's a question I get a lot too. Is like I'll be working with somebody, or like someone will see somebody tag someone, and they'll be like, like what'd you do? And I'm like, had I not said yes to this person or had this like one off weird of weird situation that I was in worked out, then this wouldn't have happened. And it's like such a hard thing to explain to people sometimes, because like you want to give them like a. Of like sort of answer yeah but it's not really that it's just like you're kind of working and then something happens that you're not really even expecting yourself yeah and then you're there and it's just like a quick little like boom of course <laughs> it, that's that's anything with like with like videography photography stuff it's like it, it you one thing can happen and you will it can it can take off snowball yeah which is which is cool that's that's why it's exciting but it's also why it's definitely scary yeah no wait i don't think you sorry if you said it right how did you get into modest mouse was that like a you sent a certain email out or yeah so i i sent an email and uh this was mind you this was the so you know how some people shoot shoot photos and sort of like spray and pray where they like just oh take, yeah yeah take as many uh -huh. photos as they can and then just and hope that some are good hope just just happens. hope yes <laughs> that's what i did with emails i <laughs> I would, I had this sort of format template thing that I made myself that I was like, all right. And also so stupid. If, if you're, if you're looking to get into concert photography, don't do what I did. I, I found <laughs> their emails and then I made it the most vague email possible. The was, most vague. Yeah. It was like. <laughs> I would like to shoot for your band in Maine. <laughs> like, but it, there was no like date. There was no band name. And so I, I made it super vague so that I could BCC so that I could send it out to a bunch of different people at the same time. <laughs> and just was, hope that somebody would bite. Yeah. Which was so stupid. Like, of course now, like now I use like an email service that like sends it separately and like, I can use different names and dates. For and sure, for all sure. That shit. But like, yeah. When I was like 16, 17, I was like, okay, BCC is the way to go. And so <laughs> I, uh, I, I put, I found all their emails, put it in, BCC'd everyone, and the only person to get back to me was Modest Mouse, like PR people, which is crazy. That's insane. Because they were already, they, just... they were already huge. Like, you know how many generic emails they probably get a day yeah. being like, hey, we want you to wear our clothes. Yes, of course. We want you to give this to our, or like the the most generic thing. I wonder like what it was like in your, e there must've been something in your email that they like, that like caught their attention. I'm, I'm, no? I'm clueless. I, I wonder if it was, <laughs> it could be, I wonder if it was my age. I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. They're like, hey, hey, this guy's 17. Yeah. I, and he's a photographer. Let, yeah, for I, sure. I, maybe they just wanted <laughs> to give me a shot. I don't know. But, and then I was able to tell Billie Eilish's people, like, hey, I shot for Modest Mouse. And then yeah, that, that credibility. Into, yeah. And then it turned into a, from there, I shot for 
a bunch of other people. But were you on tour with Billy then, or no? I, I shot. I shot for Billy. Uh, I shot for Billy in Boston when she was at a, a 300 max capacity venue. So this was very early. This was her, oh my her, goodness! Her first like tour. Um, and uh, which is crazy. That was in your home state. This was I. I drove to I drove to Massachusetts. So <laughs> it was it was it was a bit of a trek. It was a bit of a trek, and I was I was seventeen, almost eighteen. Just got my license, and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna drive to Boston <laughs> to shoot this concert, and then drive back at, in the middle of the night." And uh, anyways, but- it, it went great. It was awesome. I feel like for someone of that age, uh, or someone of that like um, popularity, I guess, and that like where where she's at in her career, that's like a good like yeah, for sure. They're like, I have to drive six hours for sure. I'm yeah. driving six hours, like yeah, whatever it is, ten hours. I I don't care. Even if I had to drive six hours home the same night, yeah, would have still done. And did you do that by the way? Did you like go and drive home, or was of it like course. you stayed for? <laughs> you, think, you think you think at 17 i was like yeah i have the funds to to stay in a hotel no i drove <laughs> home right away i could barely cover gas come on <laughs> but i uh, savage yeah i i uh yeah it was one of those things where it was like i just want anything i want to shoot yeah. anything and mm. uh when i got to meet her after and 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 that was huge. And then I, I kept my connects with her. And then her very next tour, she went from the 300 max capacity to a to a 5,500 seat place. Which oh my is God. the most ridiculous growth I've ever seen in an artist. It was within yeah. a year. It was crazy. I just saw that video of her on YouTube that was like, it was like, say something, say where you are in 2015. Say where you are in 20, yeah. 2016. That video. Yeah. I was like, whoa. And you, it showed the numbers going up. Yeah. I was like, damn, dude. It, it's it's crazy. I I shot for her when she had like she was in the hundred thousands of followers, not the millions, the tens of millions that she has now. <laughs> but, she was a bit more underground. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, and, which is crazy to say that Billie Eilish was once underground. <laughs> it's crazy, but it's crazy that you started off with that experience too, because I feel like. A lot of people don't get that right out the gates. No. Like that doesn't happen for everyone unless like we were saying earlier, something just randomly comes up like that and you have one experience that just pops into another thing and boom. Yeah. But what I was going to ask you is, so after you did music, um, I feel like that's like a light bulb moment, like a little like click mm-hmm. thing. People are like, Ooh, this is like my thing. Yeah. But like you started branching off and obviously now you're fil- you're shooting uh, photos for Curtis, Jacob and Dean, Yep. Um, which is, I guess still a similar nature is like concert stuff, but it's like a little bit different. Yeah. Um, after you shot for Billy, what made you kind of like decide that you were going to do other things too? Cause I know for me, like, especially after I like filmed a concert or two, I was like, this is my thing. And I just kind of like rolled with that for a little bit. Yeah. And it took like, it definitely took me a little bit to branch off, but what was like your kind of, th- what was your thing there that you realized you had to like branch off, shoot something else? Yeah. So I was, I was doing concerts for a while. It was like, it was, it was Billy and Modest Mouse. Then it was like, I don't know. I shot everything from like uh, electronic artists to there's a girl, Maggie Rogers, who's a, a I know who that is. vocalist. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I, I shot everything. And then I was like, all right, so what's the next step? Because there's, you can only do, you can only do unpaid for for uh exposure work for so long <laughs> um, so, you need to eat you need of to eat. course yeah absolutely and, and and at that point i'm still i'm still living with my mom and and mm. so it's like all right but i do i do want to do something bigger and so mm-hmm. i was reaching out to a bunch of people for tours mm-hmm. because i felt like that was the next step and uh I I reached out to, again. I this is I finally found a, an email service that wasn't BCCing people, and uh, <laughs> I I mass emailed like two hundred people who I saw were going on tour within the next like two months. Oh my god! And so I I 
did that and got no response for the longest time. <laughs> and then, like, no response from anyone. 200 emails. That's 200. You'd think one. Just literally 1% would respond. You one. would think. Mm -mm. It's, Nothing. It's, it's, it's tough because imagine, think about all the, I mean, think about all the emails they're getting. Like, like right. Anyways, then I get a, an email from the, my only response was uh, was from Danny and Drew's people, and they said, uh, "Can we can we get on a call like tonight? We mm -hmm. we and the tour was in two weeks. Oh wow! And he was like, we want you on this tour, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll send you a contract, and we'll just get it done. And That's it was, and that crazy." Was it. And then within two weeks, I was on a bus traveling with with these guys who who I had watched their YouTube videos. It's just it's cool to see him blow up because I saw him on Vine. Yeah. And everything. I just one day was like, "Where'd he go?" And I searched him on YouTube, and he was like, he had like four hundred fifty thousand subs at the yeah. time. I was like, "Dude, he's a big YouTuber now. Like, this yeah. is crazy." And then of course, Danny, Drew, yeah. Curtis, etc. Went from there. Of course. Found the rest of them, but. Yeah, that's so I, I've like known those guys, but it's actually kind of funny because I haven't actually crossed paths with Danny since high school. Like we've messaged on Instagram maybe like two or three times since. Yeah. Like we just haven't crossed paths in a while. Yeah. But um, yeah, dude, it's crazy. I, I mean, I hope to be up there one day too, like of shooting course. videos of them or something. Yeah, it's it's I, it's the coolest it's the coolest job in the world, and uh, yeah, it's it's great. I love yeah, it. so how how is tour first off yeah let's bring this up so you just got back from tour yes. with curtis jacob and dean yep uh how how was freaking tour and was that your first like actual like full tour experience or have you been on like a bigger tour before that or what yeah so so the the this this last tour with curtis jacob and dean was, was actually mm -hmm. pretty pretty easy compared to the one with danny drew and curtis the we are okay it was a lighter tour. Mm -hmm. Um, that one was on a bus for a month and a half. Oh my God. That was like, that, that was the craziest. Like it was so stressful. And so like, it, it was so much, mm -hmm. but it was, it was a lot of fun. I, I don't want to take away from that, but it was also like, it was, I, I was, Ugh, I sound I sound like such such like <laughs> it, this is all this is all luck. This like I, I would like to, to uh -huh. tell everyone this is all luck. I was newly turned eighteen, mm -hmm. and I was uh, I had just graduated high school. Oh wow! So you're and, right out the gates. Yeah, and and so I it was actually that summer that so it was I graduated high school in whenever May, and mm -hmm. then left in like july for sure for it, sure it was it was bonkers but i <laughs> i uh that was really stressful but it was really exciting that was like 30 something shows over mm -hmm. the span of a, a month and a half which was a lot um but this last one with with curtis jacob and dean was a blast i i had so much fun with them yeah it looked like you had some really cool photos i saw you Thank posting you. recently from it um that's that's really cool how is it like okay, how is it being like? Is it because like, when I'm shooting when I'm shooting shows usually like it feels like kind of like even though I'm enjoying it, it still feels like stressful because there's like moments that you don't want to miss, mm -hmm. but there's also like just so much going on because like obviously they have a lot of people at their tour. Yeah, <laughs> of course. There's just so much to navigate. Yeah, like even though it seems like you're just shooting photos, there's like way more than that. Of course. Um, how was that for you like during their tour was it did you was it pretty like relaxed or was there like stressful parts of it or what was like the most exciting thing for you during the tour yeah so i i comp i totally know what you're talking about when mm -hmm. when you're shooting a show like especially like at least with like with photography i don't know how it goes with videography but do you have like a first three rule for some of them yeah yeah sometimes that's the worst yeah it's it's that's horrifying my the 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 first billy show i shot was first three and uh so that's that's really stressful but with these guys it's like they're doing like two shows a night on average and 
I know like they're set. So if I if I know that Dean's going to make this face right now, but I miss it this show, there will always be a next show. Ah. So I find comfort in that where it's like, okay, mm-hmm. I I there's they're doing nine shows in six days. If I don't get it this sure. day, I'll get it the next one. Right. Which which is actually a, something that I, I've never experienced in like shooting shows. Like it's actually really comforting. Yeah. <laughs> which is <laughs> which is usually it's very stressful. Mm-hmm. But but like candidates and stuff behind the scenes stuff is always stressful if you miss it. Yeah, because um, it only happens once. Yeah. You don't want to be yeah. like, hey, laugh again. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, put on a hey. Do a fake laugh for me so I can yeah. get this fake photo. Yeah, pers- that you didn't actually laugh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's that's always hard, especially for video too, like getting like those 15 seconds because I can't like, especially because I'm getting audio too. Of course. So it's like I can't redo that at all. Like I can't even like really fake it even. Like even if I had to. Yeah. It's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, Absolutely. That's sick. So okay, let's move on and talk about like, uh, like technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you've you started off with one camera. Yep. And then now you have another camera, right? Of course. I'm assuming. Yep. Uh, what was the first camera you had versus like what you have now? Why did you get like, because that's, I do want to like really like nail this one down yeah. because I get slammed with this question every single day. People are like, what's the best cheap camera I can get that's yeah. done? And I'm sure you get that question time to time. Yeah. And oh boy, I do not know how to answer that. Like I've sent a few links and oh, hey, out of budget. Yep. And then I'm like, well, I just gave you my answer. Yeah, so I don't know of course. What to tell you. I, I actually just responded to a, a DM a couple uh, a couple days ago, I think. That was like, it was like, hey, I, I, I'm starting photography or whatever. What's a what's the 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 dream camera? And then of course it was out of budget, but uh, <laughs> because it's you know you can't start out with with a camera like the camera or lens that I'm using. Like that's right. That's that's insane. You need to figure out if you actually enjoy it and then <laughs> start dumping yeah. money and losing a bunch of money and, and being sad that you're investing so much money into something you rarely make money back from. But uh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but I uh, so I started out shooting on you. You were close. You said T3. I, I was shooting on a T2. I T5. I T5. I. Yeah, OK. OK. Right. <laughs> uh, so I. But I mean, that's, that's, that goes to show like sometimes gear really doesn't matter in certain situations. I shot for, I shot for gear. Yeah. I shot for Billie Eilish with a T5i on an 18 to 55, like a kit lens. They're the worst. (laughs) They're the worst photos in the world. (laughs) I hate them so much. Like I've, I've, I've hit them. F4. F4. Yeah. No, I think it was F4.5. I literally it was, it was it was horrifying. Like And then and then it zooms and the Fs go up. Yeah, 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 of course. And it goes to F like 4.5 to 5.6. It's the worst. Yeah. yeah. 5.6 at 50. Just so bad. That's yeah, the worst. So I was shooting on that and uh yeah, it was I would say my setup was probably like a $400 setup. Like it it was <laughs> It, the telephoto that I was using was a seventy to three hundred, but it was the it was the the kit one, like the one yeah. that like it's the worst. Anyway. I'm sure. I'm sure, though. In hindsight, like if we go back far enough, there was probably like YouTube videos and like there was probably like a like a thing for them on the internet somewhere that was like this is the camera that like you got to look at this one. You, like of course, I'm sure it was relevant for sure. Yeah, because of the time, and that's why I struggle to tell people what to get. Because, like, timing, I always think that timing is everything. Like, right now, the camera I have came out, like, what, last year? Mm. So, I'm like... What do you shoot on? Uh, For video, I'm shooting on a Sony FX6. Okay. Which is, like, their new cinema camera. Yeah. But it's, like, I can't tell people what to get because I'm not living in the same time as you. Like, I don't know when of you're course. doing this. Yeah. Um. So, that's that's what makes it hard to be like, yep. Because I started with a 60D, I yep. think. or a six, Yeah, 60D. You know why I got it? No. Because a YouTuber, tell me if you've seen this YouTuber. His name is Ty Moss. Okay. And he used to make like tech reviews and he started making skate videos recently 
which is like so weird because back then I was into tech and now uh-huh. I'm into skating and That's he's cool. like followed the same path as me. Yeah. Just like so random. But yeah, back then he was making tech reviews and he was like, hello guys, I'm doing a little unboxing of the Canon 60D. And like, hey, the second he opened the box, I was like, all right, cool. Computer off, I'm going to Best Buy and I'm yeah. buying this. Yeah. Like it literally took me, I did not even like look at specs or anything. I'm like, cool. Ty has it. I have it. Yeah. Now. <laughs> that was why I bought it. Like straight up. Yeah. And it's, that's why I, I still don't know how to answer these people. So <laughs> yeah. it helps that you're telling me what your first camera is. Yeah, my, my um, first camera it was a it was a T five I and then I upgraded to a an eighty D, um, <laughs> which I I love eighty Ds. I I think that those are such fun cameras. They are. I though I think for anyone who's starting out, especially now with the way that the market is, like you could probably find a cheap eighty D that still does some some good work. Mm-hmm. I shot I shot all of the Danny and Drew tour on that. I shot billy eilish on that i shot uh like i did most of my a majority of my work on that and then at the end of the danny and drew tour i was gifted a 90d oh wow which is is the newer one and it is you i it is my go it's beautiful i love it and it's not it's not even full frame it's it's cropped crop oh wow but i love it that's Real quickly, let's just scratch on that real fast. So yeah. crop crop and full frame. Mm-hmm. Um I've noticed that like full frame I have more of like the field of view to work with mm-hmm. for sure. But I've also never had a weird issue with the crop too. That's the other thing. Like I've never ran into a situation with a crop where I'm like, darn it. Yeah, like, that I've, didn't work. I've never I know that some people swear by it, which which pe- everybody for people listening people will always have their weird uh their weird things that they have about cameras yeah where it's oh like, for sure like for sure oh you have to get this you have to you you just have to test it out for yourself you have to figure out what you for like sure. instead of just because you can look at specs but if you watch reviews and stuff like people will swear by things that are that don't really make sense in the long run. yeah so like or like weird like color like things or like stuff that's so non-detrimental yes and absolutely. it has nothing to do with like the actual like photo that the person's putting on freaking instagram yeah yeah 100 <laughs> percent. so it's like also too hey nobody's gonna call you out on that like you nope. might get one photographer to be like hey buddy that's not full frame but you lo- there's nothing to lose like no. a client's not gonna look at you and be like Kasari can't have you back. It's not a full frame. Yeah, I like. Uh, yeah, I. It's uh, use a full frame with a wide lens and you're fine. Like yeah, if you want to get sure. a wide angle, but also like, like one of my one of my f- mentors, a guy who sort of taught me, uh, how to take like live photos. His name is David Bergman. He's a photographer. He's he's a he's one of one of the canon explorers of light like one of those guys oh, who just gets gifted okay. a bunch of canon stuff <laughs> and he he has something like five 1dx mark threes and he swears by them like he swears by full frame 1dx's every time he shoots and so oh. we've gotten in little arguments where it's like, <laughs> it's like well i don't i don't need a six thousand dollar camera to shoot for sure yeah for sure i can actually you've made it through tour without yeah. six thousand dollar camera yeah. and you're good yeah and hey everyone likes the photos too yeah which is which is which is <laughs> great people if people like the photos um and the the 90d is is in comparison to full frame cameras it's pretty cheap right 100 percent. like it's yeah i would rather spend eleven hundred dollars on a body and then invest in a, a better lens right right but. yeah is what lenses are you using that's another quite another hot hot topic <laughs> um I, I uh i'm shooting on my two main ones i have a 70 to 200 uh mark ii mm-hmm. uh which is just the the regular canon one and then i have a uh my go-to got it at hand we got the camera at hand my go-to is a Sigma 18 to 35 art. Hey, lens. buddy, I got that too. Beautiful lens. Yup. I, I yep. love it. I love it. And it looks so sharp on Canon for some reason. And I tried to explain this to people, but for some reason, the lens crossovers 
like especially sigma to canon just looks so sharp yeah. i don't know why it is like even now like this is a very common thing people are like dude what you have that camera and i'm like yeah and they're, and they're like well what lens do you use i'm like they and they're like oh yeah. like they realize it once i tell them the lens mm -hmm. because they're used to their kit lens of and course. like forever the kit lens is going to be the worst for sure yeah like it's a good starting point because you don't know literally anything but uh i'd say yeah if you can switch to a sigma use that and if it doesn't work for your brand then this is always hard i always have to tell people about adapters because like sometimes you yep. buy those adapters yeah so that it works on your brand but like also too i have that I'm, i've always been a canon guy up until i bought the sony fx6 so i'm like a newly sony guy yep but i still have all my canon cameras i still have like five or six of them yeah um but i do i do think that sigma is a good lens and that's the one thing that okay we should talk about that so people are always, another hot thing i always get and i'm sure you've heard this too is like people are like how'd you get that blurry background of course in it? and they're literally talking about the f-stop yeah of and course. you're like um it's the f-stop <laughs> yeah it, but yeah yeah go ahead for for people who are who are listening uh, the the blurry background is just it's just a setting in your camera it, it and it depends on what lens you use it's it's not like or or if you're shooting from or if you're just starting out like it, i when i didn't have any good uh good gear i would sh the only way that i would get blurry backgrounds like i, I shot i shot for there's a youtuber named leon lush i know who that is yeah, he's, a, he's a buddy of mine and i was able to <laughs> i i didn't have any good lenses so i shot i shot a portrait of him uh on a 70 to 300 kit lens and then zoomed in all the way on to 300 so that that was the only way i could blur out the background because the f-stop was so bad um yeah but oh, oh my god yeah but and, also you have to make do with what you have you have to figure out how to use it if you don't if you don't know if you love this or whatever like you need you just need to figure it out for yourself i was just thinking about this yesterday like when I first started, I would just shoot stuff, even if I didn't fully know what I was doing. And I had to keep shooting stuff to find out to know what I needed to be actually doing. Of course. Because I had no way. Like, you can watch a million YouTube videos, and everybody's going to say, like, I can watch the same YouTuber say six different things about the same thing. Yep. So it's not going to help you until you actually, like, do it, do some free stuff for people. And then you're like, oh, hey, I came to the shoot and I didn't have this. Now I need this. Yeah. And then you can like charge a little bit and then you can go buy that and you slowly. It's like, because I, like I bought a flash. Like I, I, I don't know if I told you this. I used to do like skate photography. Okay. And I still do from time to time. So I bought like three external flashes. Mm -hmm. But like I didn't know you had to have three until, and like some people even say you have to have five or six. Yeah. Still. But like now I just use three, but I started off with just one to begin mm -hmm. with. And I didn't know about like a backlight or a fill light or like I didn't understand any lighting concepts. Of course. So I was like, um, <laughs> yeah. And then I I just started shooting stuff and I was like, oh, this is what I need. I need to get flash two and three. Yeah. But what was that for you? When did you realize like, what did it take for you to be like, oh, wait a minute, hey, I need this like flash or like I need. When did you realize that? Yeah. So I I've actually been very. Uh... I've been very hesitant to buy a nice flash because I hate one. I hate, I do hate spending money on, on stuff. Gun gear. It's so su it sucks. That's the worst part about this. It's never, spending it's never money cheap on the gear. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not like you can just drop like 50 bucks on something. It's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, uh, on, on, on tour, like this, literally this last week, I bought mm -hmm. uh, uh, an external flash, which is my nice. only external flash. My first with a external trigger. flash. Yep. With a trigger and receiver. Yeah, because because I just I needed to. Because for the behind the scenes stuff, it, it got to a point where I was like, <laughs> all right, so when I'm using the on camera flash, I'm like, all right, so I can't use my long lens because my lens gets in the way of the flash. Like you can see, like a, a dark circle, a circle yeah. in the flash. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst. So I was like, "All right, I'll spend." It was literally like three hundred dollars. It was, it's a, it's a bad uh, flash, but it's there, you know. Um, yeah. But 
because I'm only using it for like behind the scenes stuff. Right, right. So not the main not, stuff. Yeah, it's not like I'm setting it up different places. I feel like there's there's always things like I when I was starting out, I remember I remember being like saving up like three hundred dollars. I had I had the T five I, and this is what I suggest to people like. I, I listen would, up, listen up. Absolutely. <laughs> I was just like you. Like I would watch so many different reviews on stuff. Like there was a, a guy who would would take his camera out uh into the into the world and and show like street photography that he took with different lenses, like testing. Stuff. For sure. And yeah. so and so he would say good things and then the next review I would see it would be like, Oh, this lens sucks and I'd be like, Well shit. <laughs> and so I I would rent lenses i would rent equipment to test it out myself and then i would be like okay so this lens like like i literally i rented a a a tamron 150 to 600 for a telephoto because i thought that i wanted a a better zoom this was very (laughs) early on because i didn't know about like f-stops or whatever and so (laughs) i was like all right so this makes sense to me and then i remember trying to shoot and it was awful and it didn't have is it didn't have anything to it and it, it was <laughs> awful, but it, but to rent it was like thirty dollars. Image stabilization yeah. for those that don't know. Yeah, I. But it it, it was thirty dollars to rent for three days, <laughs> and to purchase it was it was like a thousand dollars. So like just yeah. Testing, so hey, why not? Yeah, testing not? that stuff out is great. I rented like three lenses at a time, and then sent them all back with the perfect lens in mind. It was for great. sure. Great idea for sure. Yeah, it's it's. That's that's what I suggest to people is like it, yeah test that out yourself or if you can go to a camera store and test out cameras like that's super important yeah certain ones are nice enough to let you like test them out too yeah. and even like I hate that I'm saying this sucks that I'm saying this but I feel like even on TikTok you can even go on there and see some stuff too people are like this is if you just search like hashtag photography yep there's like like you said now there's a million photographers of like course. back when you started and back when I started there was like I felt like I honestly felt really exclusive because I remember I looked up what I was doing yep. and I was like, oh, wow, I'm like one of like 15 people or like, you know, it wasn't like 15, but it was a very small it's, number. Yes. Yeah. It's... And I was like, damn, dude, I feel special. <laughs> and now I search like literally Chicago videographer on Instagram and I have to like scrape through a list of like 85, 100 people. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. And you look at their work and they're like definitely beginners for sure of course well that's that's what it is now that these cameras are so accessible it's like and information is so accessible because there are people on tiktok like all right here's how you can make money with a camera doing art and not not yeah what's up with those videos like it's it's like jesus like (laughs) don't stop (laughs) you know (laughs) make it stop yeah i there's this uh, there's a, a guy who i know he's a he's a friend of mine but I'm not going to say his name, but he upsets me so much. He's from Chicago as well. <laughs> he upsets it's me. It's like I know him. I, 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 I hope you don't. <laughs> he upsets me so much. So he, I remember when I, you know what Lyrical Lemonade is? Cole yeah. Bennett. <laughs> I know Cole Bennett. Yeah. yeah. So this guy, he's like, I'm, I'm not kidding you. He's like 18. He is the bane of my existence. Love him. He's he's so talented. But I I hate what he's doing. He within the last 6 months mm. this guy has gone from not shooting anything to being Cole Bennett's uh personal videographer for like documentary behind the scenes stuff. He shot Rolling Loud. He just shot uh the Kanye Drake uh Oh concert, that thing. Yeah. The, the Larry Hoover concert. He just shot uh he's on t- he was doing the the Jingle Ball videography for Lil Nas X. This guy's 18 and he's what? just like it, it's just a beginner. Yes. But <laughs> but he's super talented. Like he I I don't want to I don't want to discredit him. Like if you see his edits yeah. you're like, "Oh my, like I don't understand how he's doing any of this." Like he's very talented. Right. But it's right. Like, for sure. It's possible like for anybody who's starting, it's possible within 6 months you're able to if you have the talent, you're able to 
make the leap. Yeah, if you're posting shit and like really reaching out, you're able to to make that leap. It's very tough and it's a lot of luck, but mm -hmm. you can at least try it. You know. Yeah. What was what was your luck like posting on? Obviously, you have like a pretty decent following on Instagram. I think you have like what seven thousand now or something like that. Yeah, just hit seven thousand. <sighs> <laughs> big big Instagram yeah, influencer, right whatever. here. <laughs> you know, kind yeah. of a big shot. Yeah. What do, what um, do I do? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, but yeah, you've used like hashtags and stuff over time. I assume. Of course. And like post your work. Because some people that I know, I've, I've actually talked to people that don't know, like, what to do. And I always tell them to, like, share their work. Because, like, and it, like, kind of opens their eyes up a little bit. Because mm -hmm. people, for some reason, like, I feel like having experience to me, I'm like, oh, yeah, pff, post it. And, like, yeah. I don't even, like, think. But, like, to some people, that's, like, fresh information. They're like, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, And they use, like, I always use, like, certain hashtags. Like, I'll use, like, Chicago videographer. Yep. like videographer in chicago or videographer like i always nail those ones down because i don't know what people search yeah um but what did you like were you using hashtags and like were they working out for you or what so i so i i started my instagram account this was like a second instagram account i had a personal instagram for account, sure and then i had a photography instagram account. and i had <laughs> wait was the personal one the dance one of course <laughs> of course come on i know um, that from editing your video absolutely <laughs> um but i so i made a photography one and uh, once all my like my friends started following it it had like 300 sure. followers and that's tough to like like i i had to i had to send in an email to like modest mouse i was like i have 300 followers on instagram like this is my portfolio <laughs> i didn't even have a website at the time so it was like, look on my Instagram and here's a, a photo of some some bearded guy from Maine smoking some weed on bozo stage. Some bozo from Maine. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, then I posted Modest Mouse and then that got reposted by, like, the concert venue. So I got, like, 200 extra followers. So I'm at Whoa. 500, which is super exciting. Yeah, for sure. Then on I a new shot, account. Then I shot for Billy, which she didn't repost, venue didn't repost. And Ooh. so that was one of those things where I was like, oh, shit. And I, I tagged <laughs> her. So the I got like 50 extra followers. The mm. only way that I got like a bump in followers for the first time ever was the second time I shot for Billy. I uh, you ha So the thing when you're starting out, you have to be really creative because for sure you can never like expect a following. You know what I mean? It's not like you can be like, all right, this is going to work out and just it magically happens. Yeah. Like, now I'm going to have 4,000 followers overnight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I I took photos for Billy and nobody re like her. She didn't repost them. Venue didn't repost them. This was the 5,500 seater. <laughs> I was like, well, shit. And so I I spent like the next three days marketing my photos to billy eilish fan pages saying i have exclusive <laughs> photos of billy that if you repost and tag me in them you can use them oh that's smart so it got to a point where like billy eilish brazil with two hundred and fifty thousand followers was posting it being like photo taken by jake doolittle oh which is really cool so mm -hmm. i got like 1500 followers from that which was awesome i feel like you're a secret like marketing genius <laughs> like <laughs> i think i think it's honestly i feel like desperation is like a huge part in this like yeah if you if you get to a point where it's like i i i need something to happen right for contact, sure i will contact 50 fan pages with a with a google drive link in my introductory message and say if you as long as long i will be i will be noticing if you post these but if you post these you need to tag me and, for sure and that's it you get exclusive photos that i just took of billy that nobody else has right and it works right and and, <laughs> and so I, I got up to like like 2,000 followers, and then the first tour with, with Danny Drew and Curtis helped a whole bunch because they tagged me and everything. Uh, and then uh, there, I, I 
have trained under this guy, Jordan Matter, who uh, is a photographer who's a that who's amazing. That was something I meant to ask. I should have asked you that in the beginning is like, and you kind of just answered it, but like uh, for me, I was like kind of like self-taught, but also like maybe a couple things from college I was able to like still use now. Yeah. But for the most part, it was just like me grabbing a camera being like, all right, this doesn't work. All right, cool. This, oh wait, hey, this doesn't like, Yeah. Um, but I will say for concert stuff, I also had like somebody who didn't like directly teach me, but he was like someone, I've talked about this in my podcast before, but he was someone that like I looked up to and he brought me into the world of shooting shows yep. and was like, hey, hey buddy, this is what you got to like. I could, I still want to make a video going back to the first thing I ever shot because, whoa, the camera was just moving everywhere yeah. for no reason. Yeah, like, of course. It just looks so bad. And it's so funny to look back at it now. But like, I think without my buddy being like, hey, see what you did here? You need to not do that. Like, do this. Yeah. And I just looked af- look after or like looked up to him after that. And I was like, all right, this is what he does. I need to do that now. Yeah. Um, I... And so I think we need like little, we need people like that. Of course. Of course, that's that's what that's how that's how all of this starts is you need somebody who has experience in this to to sort of walk you through it a little bit, at least. Um, Right. I wouldn't be here like Jordan was able to help me immensely. I he was he was uh, Jordan Matter. Actually, most people don't know this. Jordan Matter was uh, one of my references for the Danny and Drew tour. For sure. He was able to, he had a conversation with the manager, like himself had a conversation with the manager and was like, yeah, I, I, I trust this kid and I think he's talented. And and he doesn't have to do that. He has 8 million subscribers on YouTube. He doesn't have to do that. That's so sick. That's so nice of him too. Yeah. Because like you said, he doesn't have to. He trusted you. Yeah. He's the best. And- I, 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 I love him so much, but working with him, uh, he he he's he's the one who who like i was like i don't have i don't have much money give me a lens to buy and and oh no way like he was my person you know for sure and uh yeah he he gave me the weirdest suggestion but it helped a lot uh he said buy a buy a canon uh 100 f2 and just go for it oh, because and you did that yeah and it helped a lot with like concert photography because it opened up I, you can buy that that lens for like 300 bucks it's an it's f2 the background yeah. blur is amazing he's a dance photographer uh which is what i wanted to do for a little while so mm-hmm. it it helped a lot it was really cool yeah i I I think I need to nail that one down too, and you just did. But yeah, really, like, there's you do need those. Like, even this isn't even just like a photography or video thing. Like, this is just in life too. Like, yeah. if you there's something you're really trying to like get after, you kind of do need that like person or those people kind of like, and that's why people reach out to me. I think often because they like look up to me for that. Yeah. And so you kind of need those people to be like, hey, buddy, get this. Like, because without it, you're just again, it's back to the YouTube thing you said. You're on YouTube and whoa, there's just so many videos on so many things and you don't your brain is going a million miles an hour. A hundred percent. Um and so that that helps. But also I say that to say is like another part of this is like being smart, like Jake was talking about earlier, is being smart with like marketing and understanding how to like get yourself out there. So I think that was a really good like little bit you had there talking about putting yourself out there with like the fan pages and getting your stu- yeah. stuff like tagged around because as long as you have like people tagging you like i think when you're shooting stuff for free if you can get people to tag you great if they don't don't know what to tell you but do what jake did <laughs> take it yeah. in your own hands um but yeah i think that's one thing that like always goes forgotten with this is like you do have to be smart with like marketing you can't just be like a photographer like click 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 all right sleep click 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 sleep sleep yeah. sleep click because like yeah. that's only going to do you so much i didn't actually figure this out until like four or five years ago i was like oh i gotta be good at this thing called marketing yeah it's uh and sometimes it's sometimes it's like an an awkward situation where you're like hey like i i like i need you to like you have to tag me in this if i'm shooting for you oh for sure has to happen for sure Um, but now 
uh, Instagram released their uh, collaborator feature, which is I saw that, which is a game changer. Yes, that's and tags tags uh, don't do half as much as as this as this collaborator feature does. You're able right if people don't know. If somebody is tagging you, especially someone with followers or whatever, instead of just tagging you in an Instagram post, people can now invite you to uh, to have like a shared post together. So if Curtis invites me as collaborator, it's a post from Curtis Connor and Jake Doolittle at the top. Right. And so people find you that way. Yeah. And so those and, and it shows up on my Instagram. So those likes are now considered my likes as well right right so like i saw I the jacob say, collab yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's insane so yeah like your photo you have seven thousand followers but your recent photo just got what twenty thousand likes on it yeah well look at the look at the curtis one there's one of him a black and white one of him on stage mm-hmm. that one got me more followers than any tag has ever wow that's it, sick because- because it's 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 great it's awesome mm-hmm. so use use that that's a, a feature that i mean in the last month my followers have gone up 20 percent, which is crazy sick yeah for sure yeah use the use the collab feature like it, i wish i had that like five years ago for sure oh, yeah oh yeah if i had that like it would have helped i would have been like going crazy like work wise like i think i would have had like even work over my head back then yeah, but I'm already right now busy as it is. So yeah, which <laughs> I'm is kind of cool now. Um, but once you it's a good get feature. to that point, yeah, once you get to that point where you you feel busy, that's how you know that you're doing something right. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and also too, this is I I want to really nail this down too. It's another thing I want to uh, cover in this. Uh, probably one of the last couple topics, but uh, one thing is like, and you and I are both good with this. Is like communicating with whoever you're working with and being like mm-hmm. there to talk to them and make sure you get what they want in the right time. And also like just being a good person too, because there you can be a good photographer or good videographer or good anything, but just cause your skill is good. Doesn't mean you're going to like do the next thing. And I, I talk about this in every podcast, but I talk about it in every podcast for a reason. I don't just like, <laughs> I'm not just yeah. not bringing this up. Back- on that i feel like you have to be likable you have to be nice and there's there's a a certain thing like people think that that if you're a photographer you have to have like this weird artist persona and like people take themselves very seriously don't take yourself too seriously yeah because like yeah you can you can take photos for the most famous people in the world and you still have to be a person, you know? Right. You're not, right. You're not going to get brought back on stuff. Like I know, I know people who, who have shot for a, a, a bunch of different people, but are, but are, are jerks to work with. And they don't have repeat customers ever. Right. Right. They're always like searching for somebody new. Yeah. I feel like it's such a light topic to talk about, but it's also like a very real thing, especially doing this. I'm sure that's helped you come a long way. Which is why I wanted to bring it up. Yeah, I. Um, yeah, I think the the two main things to to sort of be successful in this. I mean, at this point, it's not. It's interesting because it's it's no longer really about talent. Mm-hmm. It's right. It's, it's how you market yourself and how and in likability, honestly. For sure, for sure. Yeah, because no one wants to be around like someone that's painful to be around. Just yeah. in general, aside from aside from this whole thing yeah um but yeah as long as you're like a likable person and you're not just like putting up a front as a likable person like you're an actual like genuine of course likable person yeah uh you'll you'll thrive yeah um which i'm glad that like that's worked out for me um but i say again we say that to say to not knock on anybody we're not knocking anybody for this one yeah uh, is there anything else that i didn't talk about that you think is like good for people to know or is there something that like you um you'd want to put out there yeah i think i think like yeah i I think just sort of to to nail home like like when i say that like talent talent doesn't matter 
it's like it's a very small amount that matters. I would say like if you want to become a photographer, videographer, like even just a creative in general, talent is is now in this day and age. It's it's ten percent. It's For it's, sure. it's how you market yourself. Um, there are people. There are photographers on TikTok right now who are taking blurry photos, but will get three hundred thousand likes on a TikTok. And there's that's like that's like a thing. Like you you, uh-huh. you you have to learn how to market yourself. You have to be consistent on social media and all that stuff. If you want to do, if you want to get a following, if you want to make a living, you have to be nice and you have to market yourself, and you have to be talented. But like to right. do social media stuff, it's like just post everything, <laughs> which is <laughs> which is weird to say because th- I feel like that wasn't the case three years ago. But right. but now I, I think just post everything. Yeah, don't miss out. Don't miss out on posting. That's it. crucial to your career. You yeah. need to do that. I was trying to see if there's like a photo TikTok we could find. I hate it. I hate it so much <laughs> because because there. Okay, there's so much about that that I don't like. I okay. I think the photos are cool, but I don't like. I don't like the the the, the coloring on them. Like, I, I don't like how, like, the contrast is so high up, you know? It's like when you're first starting and someone told you that, like, that raw look is cool or something. So you just found one LUT on yep. Lightroom and you put it on every photo. Yeah, you downloaded Peter McKinnon's, uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> one of his presets or whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, I just, I just don't like, I also hate that it blew up because, yeah, because it's like, I, I don't like Olivia Bestie. You need a tour photographer? And it's like, okay. Olivia Bestie. Yeah. Also, pet peeve of mine. <laughs> I don't like when people shoot concerts that, uh, and use the photos in their portfolio that they don't have photo passes to. Yeah. That yeah. That bugs me because you have to work really hard for photo passes and then sticking in a camera is sort of gets rid of the the whole point but i also understand if you're starting out i get it you might need it or if there's a show that doesn't give out photo passes then i understand trying to do it Mm -hmm. um but like but it's just annoying it it is annoying because it's like (laughs) and it's also like i don't like at least as a as a concert photographer I, i prefer the photos that are that are right next to the stage or right like on the For stage. Sure. I think those are really cool. Like the photo that's paused right now. I think that's cool. I don't know what it is, but I think it's cool. Yeah. I, yeah, it is. It's like, it's a cool photo. It's kind of hard to see because like, I feel like they could have done better on like the highlights or something like, like or the chat. The shadows, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah like something could have done like, for an outline i don't know there could have been so many things done better here yeah and that little thing in the bottom of the frame is bugging the crap out of me yeah i don't like that but also i don't know what that is also can you read me the caption of this i can also bark hashtag photographer <laughs> what hey what you can also bark oh, <laughs> oh sh- i can too i yeah. can bark you know what they can bark so so hire them you know <laughs> oh my god it's so frustrating to me. And then you also, <laughs> like, you go on you go on this person's, like, Instagram, and it's, like, or this person's TikTok, and it's, like, of course. Like, like you know the TikTokers? Oh, I'm such an asshole. You know the TikTokers who, who make being a concert photographer their whole personality? Oh, for sure. For where sure. Where it's, like, we, like, you and I, we, like, you, like, skate. I, like, music, and I, like, I, like making video content for yeah, myself same. but like also like the people who are on tiktok that are just like <laughs> as a concert photographer I, I i actually believe that this isn't the blah 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 blah, blah. like holy shit you know like stop <laughs> <laughs> it's so obnoxious <laughs> it's so like drawn out to the point where it's like that's not actually you yeah it's, it's, it's like not it's like you, they, it looks like their entire image 
is just that, and it's so cringeworthy. Cause like, it's either one of two things. It's either they do they do other stuff, and they don't mention it, or if it's not that, then they're just like overtly weird about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so ah, uh, in the photos, I just see like a reoccurring theme with the photos too. Of is another course. thing. Let, let's keep playing this. Let's see what else yeah. she's got to offer here. Was that? Oh, was that the end of it? Yeah, but we can we can sort of break it down because there are a bunch of photos to sort of talk about. I don't know who that is, but I also like. I guess I don't. And and this is not to this is not to be rude to Digital's Meg. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure not. <laughs> but like, I don't like photos where the uh, where the subject blends into everything else. You know what I mean? Like, there's no. There's not much focus on, on this person. The actual subject. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, um, yeah. And, which is which is fine, but for sure, I, uh, I I think that this sort of shows that like, you can take a, a photo with just about anything and, and edit it, and and people will will like it. Yeah, for sure, for sure, and that goes back to your ten percent talent thing. Yeah. Let's keep playing this. Let's see. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you. I just bought this thing, but not this. This is like, I just bought a kaleidoscope thing that does a cool thing. Like but the lens this, filter? Yeah. You I put it that. over your lens. Yeah. Is it the, yeah. Prism, the prism one? For sure. Yeah. yeah. Those are cool. I just bought that, but. That's not that. That's not, this is like, she went to Google images and searched checkerboard.png yep. and then put that on top of this photo. And then, like, either that or she just chopped it a million times and rearranged it. Because, hey, what am I looking at? Yeah, hey, what who am I is looking this at? Also, is that Jake Paul? <laughs> Are you at a Jake Paul concert? <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't like that. I, I, I under, I like people trying to do creative things with their photos, but there are some things that are so overdone. Or, or just underdone that makes no sense. And that's one of those things. If you have Procreate, you don't have to trace out your subject every time. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's every, every, I feel like every beginning photographer always traces their things and always like does like little swirly things around it. And that's like, that's cool. But it's also like everybody's doing that, you know? And you can also download an app for free in the and on your phone yeah. and do that in one second yeah. yeah it takes no talent for that whatsoever yeah. like people that don't even know what a photo app is are probably going to accidentally download an app that does that yeah dump background remover bg like yeah <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> yeah god it's yeah. cringeworthy let's keep going let's okay. see Wait, why was this done? Was this supposed to be a GIF or was this different photos? I would like this better if it was like, it looks like a GIF, so I don't mind it. But I also have a problem with, I don't know. I feel like they could have like angled it better. I feel, I feel so, like, like something. Yeah, There's you, something you, that's bugging me. Yeah. Also like, at least for myself and I'm very picky about my work, but I wouldn't use this cause I don't like where his hand is. Yeah. I, I don't know yeah. what the purpose of his hand is. I don't know why he's doing that. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't keep that in also because his wrist is blurry. I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But also, I'm, I'm an asshole when it comes to stuff like this, and I will always find little things. Like, like at least for, like, Curtis and, and Jacob and Dean, I'll take, like, a thousand photos per show, and I'll, I'll have, like, 50 selects. For sure. Um, it's the sele You got to have the selects. Yeah. I, 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 actually, I actually can appreciate that. The, the Harry Styles one, but I also, I wish that you got his face in the slightest. Right, right, right. Like, I do think this that's right cool here, cause, right? Yeah, because he always, he always has a flag on stage because people will throw flags on stage, but it's also like, if you don't know that Harry Styles does that, like, who is that? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know until you, remember you just heard me say this one? Yeah. I didn't know. I had no idea. Yeah. Like, this just looks like a, th I thought that this was, like, some, like, cultures festival. Yes. Like, that, that's what it looks like, honestly. <laughs> it doesn't look like, like a Harry Styles concert. It, do it doesn't look like a concert in general because she, she upped her, uh, 
turn the highlights down so much that you can't see anyone in the audience. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know if I told you this. I used to live in China, and really? yeah, and they used to do like different festivals like throughout the year, and like there was always like a festival. They'd always have like people with, like a bunch of flags like going down the streets like above them. So I just like used my like knowledge from that to be like, oh, for sure, yeah. like festival. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, logically, logically that makes sense, but it's also like. <laughs> There has to be a photo. I mean, be, since this person is shooting, like, a, a I'd say if I had to pick any of their photos, as much as I'm not like the biggest fan of this one, I would say that I would probably pick this one. Me too. As a favorite, the lighting on there's the hands, color. I, mm -hmm. I think it all works. It works. Yeah, yeah. There's something that like grabbed my attention about but that. But also, who is it? Yeah. Hey, who is this? Yeah. Why are they not tagged? <laughs> yeah. What are like? What I'm wondering is, what are the comments saying? Oh, Let's see. No, the comments are gross. Don't look oh, at the no. comments. The comments are, are they even all, worth? It's like, oh my god, those Harry Styles photos are crazy. You know, <laughs> and it's like, oh, but I on. also have to log in to see the comments on this. Yeah, so it's it's pointless. But also five thousand comments. So. Because people are going to forget about the actual photography to say, hey. I see Harry Styles. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. We, we all see him. Yeah. We all see him. Who is that? <laughs> Who is this? Oh, this must have been a thing during COVID. Do you remember during COVID, some concerts were happening, like, on a platform to, like, social distance? Yes. That's what... That's why she's... I was like, why is she on a weird platform? I couldn't figure this yeah. out. That's why. That's interesting. I filmed a show like that where he was really? like his keyboardist was on one platform, the singer was in the middle, and the trumpet was up on here. Yeah, it was like they were like elevated for sure. That's kind of like, that's kind of fun to uh, to say that you shot though. Yeah, they were they were elevated six feet. Yeah, that's <laughs> the the social distancing rule. Also, too, I'm gonna bug on this photo only because I'm seeing there's a purple light here and a yellow light. And I don't like that the photo was clicked during the yellow light because it contrasts too much with, like, there's, no, like, no contrast with, like, the background and the yellow on the ground. It just kind of all blends in as yeah, one. Yeah, 100%. I would have liked to see, like, a purple or something. Like, you have to know about the color wheel, too, when you're doing, like, photo, I feel like, to know, like, colors that go well together and don't. Of course. And, like, I wouldn't have rendered this as a final photo, for sure not. I would have, like, found, like, the purple or the blue moment or, like, a different color. Because I can tell there's so many colors going 100%. on. 100%. This, I think this is only fair. Let's see. <laughs> you have a photo of yours? I do. I have a couple. Of, I have my first Billy photos. I think that that's only fair to be, like, to critique these. Yeah. All right. Let's here do we it. Go. I think we've got six here that we can talk about. So... Here's Let's this. Obviously, you can tell like coloring is off. The the yellowing of the skin is is funny. Um, yeah. And then also the focus is is on the hand and not on anything else. On her face. You you hit the sharpen button oh, in like a hundred percent. You're like, hey, the face is not focused. Yeah, sharpen, sharpen it for sure. Noise noise reduction. Yeah, for sure. That's exactly <laughs> what I did. <laughs> then we've got this. And blacks all the yeah, way blacks down. blacks all the way down, of course. <laughs> then we've got this. This. Oh, not yeah. these. Oh, yeah. God. It's, uh... See, her, her lighting is... was all purple, but uh, but also, like, why did why did you push the saturation so much, you know? And also, why was your ISO so My high? ISO? Because my, my f-stop was so low, I was shooting this on 8,000 ISO. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And I can it's tell. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, oh my god. This one, I feel like, had you just stepped over, literally like three feet, you would have had like a twice as good oh, yeah. photo. Because the left of this photo does like nothing. Because you could have just had all the crowd yes. in the back and the nice outline around her, like yes, I and, have, and on her arm too. Yeah, I could have the mic stand out. I could have the her backlit a little bit more. I could have these people up here. It would be such. It would be much better for sure. <laughs> but for like the time being, it had to have been like a decent yeah. photo. You probably like. I'm assuming you took that at the time and were like, oh, of course, sick. absolutely. Like this is one of the better absolutely. photos. Like this one. Just why did also why did I okay. 
this coloring is fine. And then why did I put such a teal? Like, it's so <laughs> teal. It's so blurry here. Like, the focus, the focus <laughs> on her face is good. But then also, like, the shutter speed is bad. If I could get rid of this light, I would. Like, let's see this. Okay, this next photo. What do you notice right away? <laughs> hey, the manager is still there, and they're probably doing sound check when you took this. <laughs> so, I think it was the drum tech. It must have been. But... But also, like, come on! Like, I, why is that a select, you know? Why is the left half of the photo even in the frame? Yeah. Like, even... It, it would have been the worst dimensions, but even if you had just cropped yeah. it, it would have been a better photo. Yeah, 100%. If, yeah, if it was just, just here, it would have been better, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I also, like, this is weird to say, but if you go back to it, like, doing photos, I've learned that, like, it can look like there's stuff sticking out of yep. people depending on like where like it can look like a tree is growing off someone's head yeah, you know what course. i'm talking about it looks like there's a weird thing coming out of her in the yes. back like had you timed this photo a second before to yes, better absolutely i i completely agree let's go to let's go to this one <laughs> this one this one i like i think saturation is too high of course but should have brought the shadows up um yeah. But I mean it's okay. I think for a for a photo, it's alright. Also, so orange over here. Like, bring the oranges <laughs> down. What are you doing? Yeah, I just Yeah. Just so just orange. So orange. <laughs> I also think that like it works only because of like the crowd and like you can see the people are like yes. cheering and it's like a good singing yeah. moment, but like you also could have just moved your camera over like three inches to get that weird light beam out of yeah. there. Cause it's almost so weird on a white background that it looks like it's like chewing into the yes, photo. It does. it does. I think like you have to sort of figure out, you have to sort of figure what out your you're camera. Doing. I mean, I, that was my third concert. I shot the photos that I just showed. So it's like, you have to figure that out. It's, it's yeah. tough to, you also have to be able to critique yourself, you know? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like, and I think, when I was doing skate photos for a while, and I still have some that I'm like very proud of that are on. Did you ever use Flickr? Yeah, yeah I have some that are on Flickr that I'm still to this day. I go back and I'm like, dude, I wish, like, I hope I can recreate yeah. this photo one day. Like, I took some out in Barcelona that I'm really proud Whoa. of. Um, I took like a couple out in Illinois that I'm like super proud of. Some that have been on like bigger pages yeah. and stuff. And I'm like, damn, dude, I wish I could like recreate that but it wasn't until i went through the selects that i like saw those photos like i didn't just pick one i looked at it for like a day or two before i was like hey this is the right yeah. photo like and even i had to make sure like edits worked on it too because if the edits don't work yeah uh oh yeah absolutely <laughs> you're in trouble yeah. you're in trouble 100%. for sure um but yeah i think that was a nice little review yeah, absolutely review session of you know, our favorite, our favorite TikToker. Of course, our favorite TikToker. <laughs> Meg Sparkles or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, she yeah, barks she, too. She barks. Not, and this, this is not, this is not, we're not making animal references. No, we're not just making to be animal clear. references. Except this person no actually animal made references. the animal references. So, yes, they made it so, themselves. <laughs> so what are you going to do, you know? Do hey, not take that Olivia out of Rodrigo, <laughs> this person can bark so higher than this person, you know? <laughs> I, I, a part of me was almost wondering if the Bark reference, do you remember that app called Bark? Yeah. yeah. Was she referring to the app Bark or was she just being like, hey, I can bark? I think, I think it's, hey, I can bark. I would love it if it was related to the app Bark. <laughs> I'll have a bark off with her. Maybe I should yeah. message her. You have a little barking contest. Hey, you want to bark? Hey, I heard, I heard you can <laughs> bark. That's <laughs> oh, so funny. Um, sick well yeah dude uh that was epic, that was epic. thanks for yes epic epic podcast Let's moment. Go. We're... this is the biggest podcast channel in the united Absolutely. states everybody listens to it and there's not a single person that does not know about for the sure podcast. for sure there's a total of 112 people yeah. in the world so <laughs> jake and i are lucky to be two of those 112 let's people. go let's go <laughs> so i hope 110 people listen absolutely so that's the entire world but 
hey, thanks for coming Thank on you. my podcast. Uh, it was fun talking to you about photos Absolutely. and your career. And I hope that, you know, if you're still listening, I hope that people had stuff to take away from this. I hope the critique helped because we just did a freaking live critique. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what people want to know. So we, we got to the nitty and gritty. Of course. This, and this is useful. So uh, hopefully you had something to take away from it. And, you know, Jake gave some good advice. So if you didn't, forgot it by now go back <laughs> we listen take his advice because it's really good advice and um yeah stay tuned also drop your socials where sure. can they find yeah you? what do you want them to look up do you want your youtube your instagram yeah, what my do you... youtube is jake doolittle my instagram is jake doolittle i think those are my those are my top two that i uh those are my top two that i that i like my twitter's a mess my uh <laughs> My TikTok's a mess, so I would say Instagram and YouTube are, are the ones that that I that I, you should check me out on. Yeah, check him out. Jake does a lot. I know Curtis made the joke already, so I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah. steal it from him. But Jake, do Jake a lot. does a lot. Jake do a lot. Uh, cause he does yeah. a lot. We both do Absolutely. a lot, and follow him on his social. Get me monetized. <laughs> get him. Get him monetized. Okay. Because the entire world's listening, so we're going to have them monetize yeah. you. Yeah. And also get him to 10 Yeah, years. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's freaking go. All right. Well, thanks again for coming awesome. on. And can't wait to have you back on another episode. And I know, I don't know if I can cut it out if it's not supposed to be said yet, but I know you mentioned you have a little podcast yeah. thing you're going to be working on soon. Yeah. I'm excited to hear that, yeah. too. I don't know. Did you want to? Drop got, that that's I've coming got, soon. I've got a podcast coming up with a friend. That's all I'm gonna say. With, with the a friend, friend, okay? <laughs> it's gonna yeah. be cool. You should listen to that. Stay tuned. And thanks again for coming on. And we will talk in another episode. But follow him and freaking subscribe to my yeah. podcast too if you haven't already. If you're new here, if you're a little newbie, newcomer, yeah. subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. Damn Don't it. think twice. Subscribe. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.